All right. So continuing on with the, this month's theme about getting the best deal. Today, we're going to be talking with the sellers and we're going to be discussing negotiation strategies for home sellers. So as you guys know, we are in all kinds of different markets. Currently in the state of Arizona, we are in a balanced market. So no longer are the days where things are flying off the shelf and the sellers can demand any and all concessions. We are really, really starting to see our sellers need to negotiate to get their houses sold. So we've got lots of great tips for you in today's video. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Evans, owner and lead agent of the Living 48 Real Estate Team. Welcome back to our weekly vlog. We're so glad to have you here. Um, as always, if you would take a moment and give us a thumbs up, a follow, a subscribe, a comment, uh, however it is on whatever platform you are consuming this on, it really does help us to get this content out to more people. So thank you again so much for watching. All right, let's jump right in. So we're today we're talking to the sellers. And we are sticking with our theme about getting the best deal. Last week, we talked with the buyers, or actually I think it was two weeks ago now, we've talked with the buyers about how they can get their best deal. Well, flip-flop that. Now we're talking to the sellers today. So the first tip that I'm going to give my sellers is that I actually want you to think about the buyer. I want you to understand what the buyer's motivations are. And how do you do that? Okay. So before we dive into negotiations, it's really, really important to kind of try and put yourself in the shoes of the other guy to see what they might be thinking, see where they're coming from, see what's important to them, all of that kind of stuff. Some of our buyers are looking for their dream home. Some of them are actually investors and they're looking for a really, really great deal. So by understanding their needs, we're going to be able to negotiate better with them. So first thing I want you to do in trying to understand the buyer is I want you to research the market. The same way that their agent is advising them, your agent should be advising you as to what is the current market. What's happening out there? What are the trends? What are the dynamics, the supply and demand, the sales prices, average days on market? Um, all of this kind of stuff is going to help you better understand what the buyer is dealing with and how best to negotiate them from a position of strength. All right. The next thing I want you to do is see if you can do your very best with the help of your agent to identify the buyer profiles. Not all buyers are the same. Obviously, a first time home buyer has much different needs, wants, uh, thought processes than a seasoned investor or someone who is bought several and sold several homes. So we want to identify what kind of buyer that we're dealing with here so that we can tailor our marketing efforts, tailor our message, tailor our negotiation approach um, to appeal to that specific demographic. So that's really, really important in understanding your specific buyer's motivation. And the last one for the buyers is I want you to address the buyer concerns. Again, put yourself in their shoes, what kind of a buyer is this? What is going to be important to them? And I want you to anticipate some of their concerns. Are there any issues on your specific property that might deter buyers, such as outdated features or um, needed repairs that are very easily to be seen? By addressing some of these concerns up front, you're going to strengthen your position of negotiation when we get to the negotiation table. Okay. Second tip I wanted to address with my sellers is handling offers and counter offers. All right, when you get an offer, yay, that is an awesome milestone. We're super excited about that. And it may not be the offer that you're, you were hoping for. It may be slightly disappointing to you. So what do you do with those? Um, what, there's a few things I want you to consider doing, I think that is gonna put you in a position, um, a stronger position for your negotiation. So the first one is, Respond quickly. Don't sit on it for, for too long. Um, prompt acknowledgement of it. And this is going to be done by your realtor, most, most likely. Uh, the prompt acknowledgement of that offer, questions about the offer, um, and, and just really being timely with it is going to help create momentum that's going to keep things moving along. It's going to make everybody feel good. All right. Uh, the second one is I want you to evaluate the offer carefully. Okay. It is not just about 
here's the offer price. There are going to be additional terms and other things that are being asked for or not asked for um, that need to be considered in the overall big picture of the offer. So your agent should present to you what we term a net sheet. So basically taking any and all offers, breaking them down, um, including all of the costs that you would have associated with the sale of that property and giving you a final bottom line net number. This is going to help you take all of these different thoughts, bring them together and put it into just a solid one pager piece of paper that you can see. Um, so sometimes the price is not the thing. Sometimes they're asking for a closing date that just doesn't work for you, or they're asking for things that you're not willing to leave behind in the property. So there are a lot of other terms to be considered in an offer when uh, when you're reviewing it. So do make sure you evaluate each offer very carefully. All right. The last point under this one is that I want you to just have it as a hard and fast rule that even if you don't like the offer that you receive, you are going to counter offer. Okay. So be strategic. Don't be crazy about it but do plan to counter offer. If it's not quite what you were hoping for, don't get offended. Maybe they're trying to feel and test out the waters as well. So just do a counter offer. Be reasonable about it. Be strategic about it. Don't be like overly aggressive about it. Um, but do show that your buyer, that you're willing to negotiate and that you're willing to, to attempt to move forward in good faith and that you're looking for common ground and, and that, you can trying to find something that's going to work for everybody. So those are the three tips I have about handling offers and counter offers. So let's move to tip number three, which is knowing when to stand firm, when to plant that flag in the sand, or when to be flexible and make adjustments and accommodations. All right. So again, negotiating is that skill of trying to figure everybody out, bring everybody to a middle ground and, um, make enough compromises to make everybody feel like they have slightly won, but also slightly lost. Okay. So here is how you as a seller got three tips on how you can do your best to navigate that delicate balance. So first thing I want you to do is before this ever even happens, before you go to market, before all of this becomes even a possibility, I want you to know what your bottom line is. Okay, I want you to know what the minimum price, the minimum terms that you are willing to accept are. And it's essential to be flexible between what you have listed and what that bottom line is. But it is also important to understand that if you accept an offer below this, now you're in a short sell situation or you're not going to have the money that you need to make this next move. Um, just know what your limits are. And then once you have those limits, be prepared to walk away from a deal that just doesn't meet your needs. All right, because it doesn't do you any good to accept a deal, an offer that isn't going to help you meet the financial need that you have in the sale in the first place. All right, so second second point under this one is to be open to creative solutions. Yes, I know that sounds scary and gray and, um, and maybe not something that you're totally comfortable in, but there are a lot of ways to accomplish the same thing. And so I want you to be open to some of those creative, strategic solutions that maybe are not just the most straightforward out there, all right? Be be open to alternative terms, um, maybe some seller financing, um, maybe leaving certain furnishings or appliances um, to sweeten the deal. Just be willing to be a little bit outside of the box to accomplish the deal, all right? All right, and the last point I got under this tip is to stay emotionally detached. When you become a seller, we are now in a business transaction. The thing that you are selling is now the asset. It is no longer your home. I don't want you to attach emotionality to it any longer, okay? So now we are going at these negotiations from a business perspective uh, with a level head we are not going to let the emotions get the better of us. Uh, and we're going to focus on the facts and the ultimate goal and securing that best deal possible. All right. So there you go. Now, final and last tip 
for my sellers and getting the best deal during the sale of their house and, and strategic negotiation is to really, really look for creating that win-win solution. What does that mean? That means both parties are going to walk away satisfied with the outcome. Nobody's going to like be the winner of the game and the loser of the game. You're going to win a little, you're going to lose a little, they're going to win a little, and they're going to lose a little, okay? So we're going to focus on the mutual benefits. We're looking for opportunities to create value for both parties. For example, we might offer to cover closing costs or make minor repairs before closing that will benefit the buyers, but it also allows the sellers to get the deal closed, maybe even close faster, okay? Another tip I've got for you, we're going to communicate effectively. Clear and open communication, timely communication. These are the keys to successful negotiation, all right? So be transparent about your priorities. Don't make them guess. Don't make them like have a a crystal ball that they you know they don't have, but be very transparent about your concerns and your priorities and your timelines and encourage your buyers to do exactly the same for you. Address any misunderstandings or conflicts, promptly and keep negotiations moving, okay? And for the final point under this creating a win-win situation, we want you to consider the long-term relationship, all right? This is going to be your neighbor's new neighbor. This is going to be um, your, your friend's children's new friends. So let's really remember that real estate transactions are not just about the here and now, but they also can impact the future for those that you really care about. So again, maintaining that positive rapport, um, attracting with honey rather than vinegar, those kind of things during negotiations are all going to lead to the best possible outcome for you, the seller, and potentially the buyer as well. So in conclusion, effective negotiations, you guys, it's a strategic thing that you need to be prepared to do. It's essential essential part of selling your home. And with the best guidance, with the best understanding, with the best motivations, all those kind of things, you're going to be able to get the best deal for your home as you go to market to sell it. You guys, I am so glad to have these conversations with you. And this is a fun market that we're in right now. And they're always fun markets. But as always, we are here to be your residential real estate resource and expert. Please don't hesitate to ask us questions. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us and get our opinions on things. We are here to help you with that. No obligation. So as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Please share it with someone who needs this information as well. And we'll see you on our next video.